Hello, this is Shane from ContingentConvertibles.com. Today I'm going to run you through a model which I've developed which aims to price contingent convertibles or COCOs or contingent capital, however you wish to call it. As my definition, I take this uh, to be any debt which can either be written down to par or can be converted into equity under a given contingent event. So if you've already got to this video I imagine that you already know quite a lot about contingent convertibles but the typical structure of these COCOs is that they are issued by bank there are some issues also by insurance companies but generally it is issued by a bank which classifies the debt as additional tier 1 capital under the Basel 3 upcoming regulations which are being implemented at the moment and the idea is that this debt is classified as loss absorbing so what this means is the whole idea of COCOs is for a bank to be able to call on this loss absorbing capital in a moment of distress so instead of having to go to the taxpayer or the government or instead of having to raise more equity or more debt when it enters a period of distress then it is able to write off these bonds or convert it into equity at a distressed level and the capital position will be replenished and the bank will be able to uh, get out of a situation that would otherwise uh, make it insolvent so I'm gonna begin by just saying that this model is certainly a very good starting point but in saying that I think it's very much just a foundation and it needs to be built on so anyone who's seriously looking to value these bonds this is a very good starting point and I hope that it gives you a very good feel as to how to accurately price these bonds there's been a lot of academic work there's been a lot of work on it but I haven't yet come across any spreadsheet which aims to do it so I'm going to run you through first the variables and what the spreadsheet does and then I'm going to go through the dynamics and I'm going to go quite fast but I hope that you're able to get a good idea as to what uh, this spreadsheet is capable of. So to begin with you have the underlying issue you can enter a custom bond here which uh, you can essentially make up your own uh, variables but I have built in a whole list of about 80 different issues which are currently um, in the market and they all have their built-in coupon redemption price and uh, they also have maturity and call date. Now the one thing that they don't have is the probability of conversion. So the probability of conversion is the most key variable and I'm going to come back to this at some point. So here we have a number of different simulations which you can run. Clearly the more simulations you run the more accurate that the price will be. I'm not going to run any simulations for the sake of time but I've just finished a 10,000 simulations pricing and here we have the output which is given the bond price we have a standard deviation of prices at 2.54 percent so it gives us a range of the possible prices after running the, these simulations you can do a hundred thousand simulations which would clearly give you a much lower uh, standard deviation probably in the region of um, 50 basis points or so and uh, then we have an interest rate sensitivity Interesting enough, these bonds are not as sensitive to interest rates as, for example, treasuries uh, or, or some other uh, more senior debt would be. Then we have a sensitivity analysis to the probability of conversion, which is, as I said, the most key variable. So you can see here, as the probability of conversion increases, we have a significant drop in the price. And as interest rates increase, we have a, uh, also a, uh, quite, a, quite a significant decrease in, uh, in the price as well and um, here we have a, another input which is the risk free rate, the interest rate uh, technically this should really be uh, in tune um, with the bond so if we have a bond here for example maturing 2023 we could find a similar maturing uh, treasury um, for example a US 10 year treasury and we can take the interest rate of the US treasury and, and put it here the other feature which I'll point out is that you can uh, do a, a, a sort of backward induction which uh, think of this as if it was similar to a uh, the implied volatility of an auction this gives you the implied probability of conversion so if you have the bond price in the market you can enter it here and you can run 100 simulations and you can get the implied probability of a uh, conversion 
So now to run through exactly how this model works, I will first of all just describe it as I would say a two-dimensional binomial model. So uh, what do I mean by this is that um, at each step of the binomial tree we have a scenario of interest rates and we also have a scenario of the possibility of converting into equity or being written down to par. So here we have the cash flows and here we have the price and the price is really a discount of all the cash flows. So if I just run this here we get a cash flow of eight dollars which is clearly hugely significant to what it was previously at 120 something and the reason that it's so low is because in step three under this scenario in step three we have a cash flow of zero the reason we have a cash flow of zero is because the in, in step three uh, under this scenario which is again only one scenario that I've just run one scenario the bond has converted and has been written down to par in step three so all you have are these two cash flows that you've received and you can see here that the the interest rates have a 50 percent probability of going up and 50 percent probability of going down in all of these uh, uh, different uh, nodes so if i run it once more at 128 you can see here that there's another feature which essentially uh, factors in the possibility uh, of a call date. So in step five, uh, the, on the date of 15th of the 6th, 2018, there is a, a, it's after the call date. So what this means is that the bond is assumed that it can't, the bond price can't surpass the call date. And the price is all being in orange. You can see here that there is uh, under this scenario, there is no conversion or write down to par whatsoever. And if I run it once more, you can see it gives a completely random price every time. And if you run this 10,000 times, you can get a bell curve which gives you the average forecasted price. And that's all this model does. It factors in, as I mentioned, the call date. It factors in different maturities. Um, it, it, it looks at the probability of conversion. Clearly, there's a higher probability of converting later on in the steps. And this is all factored in. And I think that it's a very solid model to begin as a foundation on how to value these bonds. Clearly, there's a huge tail risk. But in saying that, I think that um, in order to understand this tail risk, uh, this is the reason we need to look at these models and, and look at it dynamically and see how you can factor this in to the model, for example. So I would say that um, COCOs are extremely interesting asset class. They've been around since about 2009. Lloyd's issued the first COCOs in, in 2009. And uh, I think that as the, 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 the banks implement Basel III, there's going to be a huge flood of cocoa issuance, and it's going to be quite an important asset class. Goldman Sachs thinks that the um, uh, current amount outstanding of, of about 60 billion is going to grow to possibly 1 trillion by 2020. And the interesting thing that you'll find about cocoa's on, on, on the, the final note um, is that cocoa is very hugely in structure. So uh, going back to the probability of conversion, the reason why this is very difficult to model is because um, uh, of the reason that all the cocos are quite different. But I think that if I could just speak for, for a little bit on, on this, this, uh, this variable, I would see this variable as similar to the probability of a default. Now you'll see a lot of theses and, and a lot of other material online which aims to, to get this probability via black shoals. So it aims to get the probability of the stock falling to a certain level. The problem is that there's not a lot of correlation between the stock price and capital levels. And almost all the cocos that have been issued have been based on a trigger which is based on capital levels. So my solution for trying to model this figure is to look at ratings. So, for example, if you have a uh, rating of uh, single A of a bank, um, 
and the capital level is currently 11%. You can look at S&P, which gives a very good standalone guidance as to what the rating should be given a capital level. So if the capital level is, let's say, 11%, the guideline rating will be, for example, single A. And if the capital ratio is uh, 7%, 4% lower, the guideline rating will be double B. Now what you can do is you can look at a transition matrix and get the probability of a single A rating going to double B, or going to that rating. And that will correspond with the probability of hitting that trigger or below. So I would say that the model for getting this probability is almost a whole new model in itself. But I think that if you can start with this model and probably work on to another model which, which gets the probability which I've been working on and which I've done. And you can use the ratings for example or you can use Black Shoals if you can um, formulate a stock price which you, at which point you think that the um, capital ratio will correspond to then that's fine but for me I prefer the ratings approach and I also think that uh, you can add a whole load of different notches um, which either increases or decreases that probability based on the structure of the cocoa. So for example if the regulator is has, has authority to step in and convert these bonds to par at its discretion then you can add a predefined uh, I suppose figure to this probability whether it's 10 bips or 15 bips or, or 20 bips whatever uh, your model perception might be so that's it I've uh, put a lot of uh, significant uh, information on Cocos on the website continuousconvertibles.com including this uh, spreadsheet which you can download there and you can play around with and develop and uh, once more, I've put a lot of other information regarding prospectuses, regarding risk management, regarding scenario analysis on the website as well. So if you're interested, you can learn more or you can, um, I suppose, get more information from that website. And thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope that this is uh, of some help to you if you are looking to value or investigate further the uh, contingent, uh, contingent convertibles uh, con or 